Smoke is mostly fine particulate matter that is harmful to human health and impairs visibility. Monitoring smoke from both prescribed fires and wildfires is important. By knowing smoke concentration trends, you can decide if a change in burning operations is needed during a prescribed fire. During wildfires, it can help you to inform affected communities of increasing particulate levels for health and safety reasons. To help you monitor smoke in your area, let me introduce you to the MET-1 eBAM. The eBAM is a Continuous Reporting Beta Attenuation Monitor, or BAM for short. The eBAM measures the mass of particulate in the air in several steps. First, a nozzle closes over a section of clean filter tape and the eBAM takes a four minute count determining the particulate mass. Next, outside air is passed through the filter tape and the eBAM performs another count. From these two counts, the eBAM is able to determine the concentration of particulate matter in the air in milligrams per cubic meter. When the eBAM is connected to the satellite modem, it sends data hourly to the interagency smoke monitoring website. From this site, you can view real-time graphs and download data to prepare reports or perform further analysis. To help you understand and use the eBAM correctly, this program will show you the eBAM system components, how to find a good location for data collection, how to assemble the eBAM system, how to set up the eBAM parameters, how to transmit data, how to retrieve data from the interagency real-time smoke monitoring website, and how to disassemble and transport the eBAM system. The complete eBAM system includes the eBAM, the Iridium satellite modem, meteorological instruments, and a tripod all these components are packaged and shipped in five durable cases. The eBAM case contains the eBAM, the PM 2.5 inlet, an inlet tube adapter, and one roll of filter tape. The satellite modem case contains the satellite modem and the eBAM's power supply. The tripod case contains an aluminum folding tripod, and an aluminum cross arm. The meteorological case contains a PM10 inlet, an ambient temperature probe with shield, a relative humidity probe with shield, a wind speed and direction sensor, and the eBAM's user guide and quick guide. The relative humidity and wind speed sensors are optional. Refer to the user's guide on how to set these up. Finally, the last case contains items for in-field calibrations. Before you head out to the field, make sure you plug the satellite modem in overnight to fully charge its battery. Also, bring along an adjustable wrench, an 8th inch Allen wrench, and a multiple plug extension cord to provide AC power to the instruments. There are several things to keep in mind when placing the EBAM in the field. First, place the EBAM several miles downwind of the smoke in areas of greatest interest such as communities or protected areas. Second, make sure the eBAM is a good distance away from obstacles that could block its airflow, such as tall buildings, large trees, and cliff walls. It is very important that the satellite antenna has an unobstructed view of the sky. Third, keep the eBAM away from dirt roads and industrial sources that can affect particulate readings. Finally, locate the instrument at a secure site where electricity is available. To assemble the eBAM system, first unpack the tripod. Remove the three lock pins. Spread the tripod legs and reinsert the pins. For additional stability, stake the tripod feet to the ground. The eBAM contains a small amount of carbon-14, a low-level radioactive source. If the instrument falls over, this source can be compromised. If this happens, the eBAM needs to be returned to ARS for a radiation leak test. Now, remove the bolt from the tripod. Next, slide the slot on the back of the eBAM cabinet down over the tab on the tripod. Secure the bolt at the bottom of the eBAM to the tripod. Remove the plastic cap from the eBAM inlet. Loosen the black nut and push the adapter tube into the inlet. 
The tube must go through two O-rings, so push and twist the tube until it stops. Hand tighten the black nut. The EBAM uses both the PM10 and PM2.5 fittings to monitor smoke. Insert the PM2.5 cyclone onto the adapter tube. Then put the PM10 sampler onto the PM2.5 cyclone. Now slide the modem box onto the tripod. Tighten the U-bolt. Make sure the antenna has a clear and unobstructed view of the sky. Plug the satellite modem cable into the EBAM. The cable will only connect to one of the ports on the EBAM. Turn the connector nut to lock the connector in place. Plug the modem's power cord into an extension cord or nearby outlet. Now, attach the EBAM's power supply to the bottom of the satellite modem. Tighten the nuts. Plug the EBAM's power supply cable into the bottom of the EBAM. Then plug the power supply into the extension cord. Next, attach an aluminum crossarm to the top of the tripod. Tighten the Allen screws on the crossarm. Slide the air temperature sensor onto it and pinch the clamps tight. Plug the temperature sensor into the bottom of the EBAM. The temperature sensor is required for the EBAM's airflow to run properly. Let's go through the startup screens to check the parameter setup. When the EBAM is powered up, the first screen to appear on the EBAM is Welcome to EBAM. Are you ready to start? Press the white key under Yes. The date and time appear. The time must be set in military or Greenwich Mean Time or GMT. To convert your time to GMT, go to www.greenwichmeantime.com. If the date and time is correct, press the key under Yes. If not, press the key under No and correct the date and time. The left and right arrow keys will move the cursor and the up and down keys will make changes. Press Set to save the changes. Continue with the other screens. The parameter setups should be Tape Advance set to 12 hours Real-time average set to 60 minutes. Machine type should be set to PM 2.5. The next screen will check for loaded filter tape. If there is tape already in the EBAM, you'll be asked to remove the nozzle packing material. This is a metal plate attached to a chain that sits between the tape and nozzle for transporting. Slide this out. After the tape is checked, the battery condition and estimated operating time is displayed. Press continue. If the filter tape needs to be loaded, the EBAM will ask you to load it. You'll first be asked to remove the nozzle packing material. Unscrew the clear plastic spool covers. Place an empty tape roll tube on the left hub. Place a full roll of filter tape on the right hub with the tape feeding up and counterclockwise. Use adhesive tape to attach the leading edge of the filter tape to the empty core roll. Gently tension the tape. Take special care when handling filter tape because it tears easily. Reinstall both of the clear plastic spool covers. When finished, press continue. The filter will move and take up tension. The next screen will check for the loaded filter tape. After the tape is checked, the battery condition and estimated operating time is displayed. Press continue to proceed. Finally, the next screen will run a self-test. 
This test takes several minutes. When the self-test is complete and everything checks out, the last screen will display that the EBAM is functioning properly. Press Continue and Yes to start sampling. Date, time, concentration, and hourly concentration is displayed. If any fault is located during the self-test, the name and type of fault will be shown. The EBAM must be in operation mode before powering up the satellite modem. Open the modem cabinet and flip on the power switch. A red light above the switch will indicate the modem is on and going through its boot up sequence. If the boot up is successful, the red light on the far left will light up. The modem will now attempt to communicate with the EBAM. If successful, a green light above serial will come on. The EBAM will send data to the modem once communication is established. When the modem receives data, a green light above network will come on. These two green lights will cycle on and off as data is transmitted. The furthest right green light will come on and off as satellites pass overhead. If this light does not come on within 25 minutes, make sure the antenna has a clear view of the sky. When all four lights are illuminated, the modem will automatically begin transmitting data to the website. The interagency smoke monitoring website provides real-time smoke concentration data from portable smoke monitors that are connected to a satellite modem. Smoke monitors are automatically posted to the website by geographical location and the unit number. To retrieve data, open the webpage www.satguard.com forward slash USFS. Here's the EBAM we set up earlier. USFS EBAM 1001. Click on its unit number. Here's its most current data in graphical form. Real-time data is updated hourly and converted in micrograms per cubic meter. Here is the 1-hour average and the 24-hour average. Click on Data Details. Here are all the parameters that have been sent from the EBAM. Clicking the Download button will automatically save the data into an Excel spreadsheet for further analysis. You can also obtain data from specific days by changing the date and clicking Submit. The Map Detail button will bring up a map of the instrument's location. You can get as detailed as you like by moving the arrow over the 1 to 5 scale. If you are interested in past data, either from an instrument you deployed or a graphical area of interest, go to Historical Data. A choice of years is displayed. Click on a year, then select for service, BLM, or another agency that had monitors deployed. This will show a list of the instruments by number. When you click on an instrument, it shows where it had been deployed and the dates. This data will be stored here indefinitely. The About Smoke Monitoring menu provides information such as agency programs, monitors, air quality index ratings, and more. To disassemble the EBAM system, switch off the satellite modem. If the EBAM screen has gone to sleep, push the Press 4 Display button. To shut down the EBAM, press the Menu button. Scroll down the menu until the Shut Down function appears. Press the Select key. Press the button under Stop. The EBAM will now tell you to reinsert the nozzle packing medium. Slide this between the nozzle and filter tape. The nozzle will come down. Unplug both the EBAM's power supply and the satellite modem from the extension cord. Unplug the temperature sensor and any other meteorological instruments from the EBAM. Remove these from the cross arm. Loosen the Allen screws and remove the cross arm from the tripod. Unplug the power supply box from the EBAM. 
Unscrew the two nuts from the bolts, securing it to the modem. Remove the power supply and replace the two nuts back onto the bolts. Unplug the modem cable from the EBAM. Loosen the U-bolt clamp, securing the modem cabinet to the tripod. Slide the modem cabinet off the tripod. Next, remove the PM10 and the 2.5 cyclones. Loosen the black nut securing the inlet tube and remove the tube. Place the red plastic cover over the inlet. Remove the bolt at the bottom of the EBAM cabinet. Slide the EBAM off the tripod. Put the bolt and nut back in the tripod. After all the equipment is removed from the tripod, remove the three lock pins from the legs. Fold the legs up and replace the pins in the hole so they are not lost. Place all the equipment back into the appropriate boxes. By watching this training program, you have learned how to assemble and set up the EBAM system for monitoring smoke, where to cite these instruments for good data collection, and how to retrieve data from the Interagency Smoke Monitoring website. For Service and Bureau of Land Management personnel can order the EBAN system at any time from Air Resource Specialist or ARS for short. For website or satellite modem support, contact ARSIS. Or you can contact MTDC. Thanks for watching.